I'm here with um, Karol Helfgott in Cusco, and uh, maybe he, you can explain to us uh, why you're here and why we are both here. Yes, so uh, this is Agra too. Agra is, well, it's a series of, of winter schools that are just starting with the support of, I, well, not just the support, but it's an ICTP SIMPA school, besides counting with the support of um, the local institution that hosts it. Um, the first Agra was in Santiago de Chile three years ago, and now we are doing it in Cusco. Our aim is for it to rotate um, across South America, or Latin America in general, perhaps. And uh, I understand that you are the initiator originally, and perhaps you could tell us what motivated you and how you view the schools and the role they play. Yes, so I, I got it started three years ago. I had a grant that I could use once, but then we got quite a few, got quite a bit in the way of local funds, and this time around we got quite, quite a lot of support from ICTP and also SIMPA and also the local institution in SAC. So the, the aim of these schools is to really bring together number theorists in uh, Latin America, and people in group theory also, and related fields, and um, uh, well, but it, since it's a school, the primary aim, the, the primary aim is to uh, um, educate students, if I may say so. It's really to serve students. Um, we select students from all over Latin America, also students from elsewhere can apply and they are very welcome and we also provide them with housing. And, um, uh, and I think there, well, of course there is some number theory in Latin America and Latin American number theory is abroad, uh, but we do need, I believe, to put them in one place for things to develop and for a, an actual school to get started. And uh, my understanding is that you uh, grew up in, in yes, Peru? I, I, yes, I, I, I was born and grew up in Peru, in Lima, but Cusco is a, uh, it's more pleasant and more manageable in some ways. I, I think that everybody from Lima will agree. And how do you um, feel that being back in, in uh, Peru in, in a completely different role? And For me, it's very pleasant to be able to contribute. And, um, uh, well, I, I proved something a couple of years, uh, 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 two years ago, that got some local press exposure, uh, and that helped me to get some, fun, some to get local funds and so on. I, uh, two years ago, uh, the University in Cusco made me into, into an honorary professor, and so that made me that gave, that made me semi-local, and that really helped me to get to get things started. And um, you plan the schools to continue, say? Uh, well, of course, that's the plan, yes. Every couple of years? That's right. And you have um, some ideas of where it might be next? Well, right now we are looking at two very interesting proposals from uh, Rio and from Cordoba, in, in Brazil and Argentina, respectively. Uh, and then there are some other further possibilities. We haven't got many people. From, the first time around, we got we had one person from Mexico. Now we have several. Uh, perhaps we should expand into Latin America in general, not just South America. So another interesting thing about the school is that it, it was chosen so that all uh, lecturers and all courses uh, are in fact given in Spanish. Yes, that I think is crucial. We really want to reach all qualified students who are interested in numbers here in Latin America. And, well, most of them can read mathematical English, of course, almost all of them. But having having a lecture in one's native language helps a great deal. And of course, non-native speakers are also welcome, and there were several here. Yes, uh, so that's something I, I thought of, uh, I would point out, that at least um, maybe even half of the actual courses are given by people that are, Spanish is not their native language. Exactly, but they speak it well, well enough, certainly. Uh, so it's actually much better to listen to somebody give an engaging lecture in Spanish with an accent than to give, uh, than to, uh, for mo most students, listening to a lecture in a foreign language just adds an extra layer of difficulty to what is already a very difficult subject. And um, there's also a, not only people that are lecturing that uh, Spanish is not the first language, but people in the audience. Yes, that's right. We welcome them all. And so we have, of course, several Brazilians, but even a couple of people from elsewhere. See, uh, an Iranian student who's studying in, uh, in Brazil now, she also came here, and of course she's already familiar with Portuguese. And my own student, who is originally Russian, 
she learned enough Spanish in a surprisingly short span of time, and she seems to be enjoying the conference. And the Brazilians are supported by uh, Brazil. By Impact, yes, that's right. The, uh, it, that has actually helped us a great deal because they got uh, their their travel, their, they have a per diem, and their lodging is covered by that. Yes. And the courses are also being filmed so that uh, people could uh, uh, look at them uh, much later, um, uh, and also obviously in Spanish. So it's, it creates a whole sort of set of lecture notes in Spanish, which is yes, yes. So pretty asked, unusual. Exactly. We asked, we asked for uh, all lecturers to give us our lecture notes in advance, and um, we have put them out on the web. Uh, we are going to print them informally very soon. Perhaps they will become a printed, an officially printed set of lecture notes uh, later, and I think that will be, a, if I may say so, a valuable addition to the literature, especially in Spanish. Uh, but also the, the courses themselves are being filmed, which will... Yes, of course, yeah. so that it's, it's some sort of triple experience. Uh, I mean, for a difficult subject, I, I think if one is serious about having students understand most of it and really, really go back home considerably stronger in the field than they came, uh, just lectures is not quite enough. One should make notes accessible before, thereafter, and also have things be, uh, be filmed, not just so that the lectures will be accessible to people who are not here, but so that people who came can review them. And maybe we could f end with a little uh, description of your career path and uh, maybe where you're uh, based now. Yes, so uh, I was born here, I finished high school here. Um, I, well, then I went to the States with a scholarship and I got my PhD from Princeton in 2003. Then I hopped around with postdocs in the first job and ended up at CNRS in France, where I have spent five years. But now I will, I, uh, I have just started uh, a new job in Göttingen, in Germany. Uh, I sti I'm still, I'm on leave from CNRS, so I haven't cut off my ties to CNRS at all. But I'm excited to open a new chapter of my academic life in Göttingen. Very good. Uh, best of luck to you, and uh, we'll see you again in two years in the new Agra. Well, thanks to you, and I hope you're also enjoying the food which is being provided by the um, Na uh, National Academy of Sciences of Peru. Of course, and the it's been, tech. Yes, I can I can uh, testify that the course and courses and the food have been excellent. Well, I'm very glad that that's your opinion. Yeah, that's also my opinion, not about my own course, but about all the others. Very good. So, bye bye. Bye.